This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com, and PeoplesInternetRadio.com. Okay, our next guest is Trevor Evers, and Trevor is uh, one of the team that's been involved in setting up the Open Mind Conference down in Waterford, which is coming up at the end of February. And there's a lot of guest speakers. It's actually on the Saturday and the Sunday, and um, it's going to be great. Loads of great people there on the actual guest list. Um, I'm going to be heading down on their Saturday, um, so if you're going to be down there, we'll see you down there. As we say, don't be afraid to come over and say hello. Um, you'll probably be shocked when you see us because people don't say recognise anyway. Well, you won't recognise. <laughs> probably yeah. We, we're very um. Well, you, covert, you, you actually look like a caricature picture. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't look, know. you look like a Homer Simpson or something. Yeah. People say that you know when you hear me and Steve, God, you sound like you're in your thirties. Now when you see <laughs> us, you go, Holy God! I didn't think you were that old. Yeah. Yeah. So we are a couple of old farts, but. Um, anyway, so we'll be down there anyway, uh, and I'm sure it's going to be good. But we thought we'd uh, get Trevor on to have a chat with us to tell us all about it, what's been going on, who's going to be on, and what's the plan of attack. Good evening, Trevor. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Thanks for coming on, Trevor. Um, and thanks very much for having me on. I appreciate it. That's okay. No problem. We've seen it advertised, and when we initially seen it advertised, we weren't too sure who was the organiser, who was involved, and all that kind of stuff. And you have to be kind of sceptical because you don't know when when, when yeah. shows are being put on. Um, and I know we talked about the Sovereign Independent before. And the Sovereign in the Indo guys were like they were way ahead of the time. They really were with their the newspaper that they had and the seminars that they, they also had. And it was great. It's just like probably four or five years just too early. Because if they were doing seminars now, I'd like to think that um, they'd be kind of booked up. Um, and loads, right. of, loads of people going. Fair play to you and your team for doing something and organising and getting things together. Do you want to tell us the background, a bit of a history of your group and uh, what made you decide to put the conference together? Yeah, it just started off there back in, um, I think, January last year. So the group is about 12 months old now. And the reason we started up the group initially was just a Facebook group Awake and Aware in South East Ireland. And we started the Facebook group, but the idea of the Facebook group was to organise meetings locally in Waterford every fortnight that would allow people to connect with like-minded people. Because, as you guys know yourself, it can be a lonely road mm. knowing all the information when you kind of wake up to the world around you. Yeah. So those meetings started off, and initially it took a couple of months to get, get going. There was only two, three, four people, but eventually it started growing, and we grew into a group of eight, ten, and up to, at the meetings, 15, 20 people, mm. and it's still growing. But we decided, like, there's a core group of eight of us, and back in September we decided to organize the conference. It's just an idea that we were discussing and said, look, could we pull it off? Could we do it? Now, we know it, um, it has been done before. A couple of years ago, as you mentioned, in the Sovereign Independent, um, I think Jim Core as well was involved in organizing a conference back in 2011. And there was also one in Waterford here back in, in I think it was 2010. So we had the idea and... The three main purposes of it, the first one was going back again to the very original concept was to organize a conference that would allow people from all over Ireland and further afield to get together and connect and form new friendships and the whole vibration and energy to come together and connect and support um, each other. Mm. So that was the main reason, because... You know, it was great, like, I mean, these meetings on every fortnight, they were literally like a shot of adrenaline for me going along to them, like you'd be buzzing for days afterwards, because, you know, most days you're kind of, kind of interacting with your normal friends and family, and it was just like so, such a, um, what's the word? Well, it's a, it's a release, isn't it? When you get into, yeah. when you get into a meeting, as myself and Steve have been involved with a group of people, and you, it's a release where you can talk about any subject matter in that arena and nobody's disagreeing with you because everybody's kind of open-minded and they're happy to entertain the thought, which is what we always say. 
Um, exactly. That's it. You've hit the nail on the head because normally, you know yourself, you kind of have um, a checklist of subjects and topics that you can talk about with your friends and family. So at these meetings, basically anything goes. And it was just like, you know, 10 minutes would go. So, I mean, two hours would go like 10 minutes if you get me. That's like it. The time would fly, you know. Yeah, well, that's that's it. When you get with like-minded people mm. who are open-minded, time does fly. And when we did the we did the conference for People's Internet Radio in Waterford, actually Dooley's Hotel, when we did it, was it two years ago? It was a couple of years ago, yeah. We talked about the whole... Uh, fluid open your mind system I think we talked about the whole waking up process we did but we didn't have the fluid system in place at the at the time did we we didn't have the phrase coined we we knew where we were going yeah Yeah. but we we actually we we weren't just there yet but we still talked about it and it's great when you have um, a lot of like minded people together in a meeting and half the battle the trouble is with the, the, the people in the truth movement, and we've, we come across this, especially when we are dealing and speaking to the lads in the saw window and meeting up with different people, is that mm. some people, there are some people in the truth movement that are awake to some things and are not awake to others. And that's fair enough. You can understand that. Yeah. But what they have to realise, and what we try and get over with our fluid belief system, is to say, look, we know you're not awake with this, or you maybe it's not something that you looked into. But entertain it. You don't have to believe it. You just, if you entertain exactly. it, if you say, look, I don't know much about that, but I'll entertain it. I'll have a, have a look and I'll research it. But too, we found that some people in the troop movement were too quick to actually shut things down. Like they'll believe in the war, the protest and the charges and everything else. But if you ask right. to go and speak to them about the cabal and the banking system and everything else, then they go, oh, that's no, right. no, that's a conspiracy theory. And funny enough, I had a chap during the week who knows all about the legal system and he's doing all his bits in the legal system and that's fantastic. He's helping people out and everything else. And he said, um, so I got talking to him on the phone and he said, oh yeah, you're Alan from Open Your Mind. I said, yeah. He goes, I don't believe in aliens. That was his first thing he said. And I yeah. said, why would you say that? You know, like, yeah. is Open Your Mind related to aliens? I mean, have we got... Um, so I, when yeah. I see him, we're going to meet up for a coffee and I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be devil's advocate and I'm going to ask him and say, when you said that statement, does, that must mean that you've done an awful lot of research to come to that opinion or was a fact. Yeah. Because what me and Steve do is we break down the psychology of the words and what people say. Rather than yeah. argue about the content of the information, let's look at how the brain works. You know, and let's talk about is that Absolutely. fact or that's not opinion. And when people start, and when you start speaking pe- speaking to people about this, they kind of sometimes they look back and go, actually, you have a point. And then other people suffer from cognitive dissonance, and you go, no, I, right. I don't want to accept that because if I accept that, I have to deal with it, and I don't want to deal with it, so I'm just going to ignore it. And that's right. fine. We're all on a path of knowledge. But so on your. Well, you know, Alan, that that's the second uh, purpose, the second reason for the conference, Mm. because as you said yourself, I mean, there's some people that have say one or two pieces of the jigsaw, and not the whole jigsaw. Mm. And the idea, the second purpose of the conference was, I mean, to bring the different pieces to the table over the two days, so to look at the bigger picture, if you like, and start joining the dots. Because even in Waterford here in the southeast, and on Carrick some fantastic seminars um, on debt solutions um, and you mentioned the water meter protests and they're all fantastic but each of them to me was just looking and focusing on one part of the jigsaw you know one piece of the jigsaw and one Mm. element of it Mm. and so the second reason for it was you know to bring the knowledge and conscious awareness of the overall bigger picture and if you look at the topics um, from the 14 speakers like we cover a range of different areas and different topics over the weekend and there's something for everyone in it. Well, that's brilliant. Now, before we go on, we did say mm. when we were talking today that you want to give away two free tickets to the conference, correct? Correct. Right. Yep. Do you know, so the idea is to the listeners, if you phone in before the end of the show, we're going. Trevor has a question he's going to ask. And if you phone in, um, please, only people who can go to the conference. There's no point phoning in if you're not going to go to the conference, okay? But if you want to go to the conference, but say you can't afford it, well, Trevor has two free tickets. And if you want to phone in and you know the answer to the question that Trevor's going to give, then you'll get the two free tickets. Now, Steve, do you want to give out the phone number? 
Yes, if you, well, we have to give out the question as well, but the phone number, mm-hmm. as usual, is 046927 Again, if you ring in from outside of Ireland, 00353 now, I did check the phone earlier today, and the phone did ring, because I know we had the problem <laughs> before with internet phones. So, Trevor, over to you. What's the question you have? Okay, guys, I'm just going to make it a very easy question. Yeah. And the question I have is, what hotel in Waterford is the Open Minds Conference taking place in? Brilliant. Okay, and I would have picked that question yeah. as well, funny enough. Great minds think alike. I would have thought of a hard one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not what, a really hard one, but you know, no one would know it, probably. Yeah. So. What does Trevor eat for breakfast in the morning? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, folks. So, if you know the answer to where the Open Mind Conference is, what hotel it's in, in Waterford, call in on 046 927 before the end of the show. And if you're right and you're the first one on the phone, then you'll get two free tickets from Trevor. Okay, Trevor, let's crack on. I, I can just say, like, the third um, purpose, I mean, I've gone through the two reasons and, and purposes behind the content so far. And the first one um, is, as I said, to allow like-minded people to come together and connect over the weekend. Oh, uh, the second oh we, we, reason, have, we have a caller. Hang on, sorry, Trevor. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, Steve. Hi. Hello, caller, you're on the phone. Do you have the answer to the question? I do indeed. It's Dooley's Hotel. Dooley's Hotel. And what's your name and where are you ringing from? I'm ringing from Wicklow. And what My you... name is Robert Furlong. Great stuff, Robert. Well done, Robert. It is Dooley's Hotel in Waterford. Um, what we'll do is we'll get your details. You stay in the line and I'll... Yeah, Steve's going to um, take up the headset now and we'll get your details, Robert. Well done. Uh, you got two Brilliant. free tickets to the Open Mind Conference in Waterford. So I'll pass it over to you, Steve. You want to pick that up and I'll okay. speak to Trevor. Um, sorry, go ahead, what you're saying. I've just gone through the reasons for it, the three main purposes of the conference. Um, that first reason, to allow like-minded people to connect and make new friendships and support. But in saying that, it is like open to everyone, you know. I mean, it's not just preaching to the converted, like everyone is welcome to it. So if you have a friend that is kind of starting to wake up or might be interested in the information of some of the speakers, even a couple of the, of the speakers, then bring them along. Um, like us as organisers are not asking anyone to agree with every single word that comes out of every speaker's mouth, if you get me. Yeah. But just to be open-minded and to be respectful um, of the information being provided over the weekend. So that's the first reason. The second reason is the conscious knowledge and awareness aspect of it. But the third reason is probably no, the most important, and that's the whole empowering um, aspect of it, um, you know, to empower people with solutions um, as to what you can do to not only, only change yourself, but change the world as well. Um, because sometimes, like, I mean, yeah, as so you know yourself, we can go down a few rabbit holes and the information can be very overwhelming. Exactly, yeah. You know, and so if you look at the actual timeline and the schedule of the, the days over the weekend, Many of the actual speakers in the talks are focused on solutions um, and they're empowering talks, you know. So the whole event as a whole is an uplifting experience, you know. It's fun, it's uplifting. I mean, sure, we might go down a few rabbit holes in between along the way, but it's all about empowering yourself with the knowledge, information and the whole spiritual experience. Brilliant. Well, that's and, and yeah. You, yeah, and you have a mixed bag of guests on there, yeah. uh, dealing with all di- different subjects. And we know people will be um, interested in some subjects and not interested in others, and that's fine because we sure. always say in OAM, everybody's on a path of knowledge, and some people are further down the road than others. They're further down the path, and what you do is you put it on the shelf and you go, right, okay, I'm not ready for that information yet. It's just not resonating with me, so I'll put it that's on right. the shelf, and then maybe in a year's time, two years time it will resonate with me and then I'll, I'll, I'll take it back and have a look at it so that's right it's just, it's just to have an open mind I mean you were talking about David Icke there in the first hour and like one of the, the quotes that he often um, says that he talks is Socrates the Greek philosopher knowledge is knowing how little we know so look even the organisers we can't wait for the speakers like there's, there's so much information that we can learn over the weekend ourselves you know yeah 
Well, talking about the uh, the philosophy, one of the things I always say is the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. That's right. Yeah, exactly. You know, because That's it, it. when you open up the can of worms and you look, or you go down a rabbit hole and you go, God, I didn't think there was so much here. And it's to be able to turn around and go and acknowledge the fact that we don't know everything and we're learning all the time. And the other thing I would say to people as well, and I've come across this, is that if somebody is further down the road, um, I had this debate with a chap on one of the forums on Facebook. And I have to say, he had a very arrogant approach to um, what he thought he knew. Um, and yeah. what he should be doing is, if if you meet somebody who's further down the road, or if you're further down the road and you meet somebody... It should be kind of a nurturing process and understand how, how much they know. And you don't want to push the information on them because they're not ready. But what this chap tried to do on Facebook was to force his opinion in. And, you know, sometimes you go down a rabbit hole and people further down the road will go, you don't want to waste your time going down that rabbit hole. It's a crock of crap. You don't go down there. But sometimes you have yeah. to go down there to realize that it's crap and it's no good. But this, right. this person was being quite forceful on Facebook and he was trying to say, oh, you don't want to go down there. Just leave it alone and everything else. I know better than you and all this kind of stuff. And you think, no, hang on a minute. He doesn't understand the learning process. Sometimes you do have to go down that rabbit hole and, and go down there and see it for yourself and not that's just right. accept it from when somebody says. And I think that's a part of learning about information and knowledge, whatever the knowledge may be is to understand how to treat your fellow man and be right. respectful yeah. with each other and understand that we're all on different levels of this knowledge because it's a massive jigsaw, as you said, right. and we're all trying to put the pieces together. But some of that, I mean, comes with experience as well. I mean, I remember when I woke up there 10 years ago, it's like, you know, you can't wait to tell your family and friends and you just can't wait to... You've like shared information that you've come across that the world isn't as taught to you in school you know, yeah. um, but you eventually, like, you get to a rude awakening that, you know, as you mentioned the first hour, your your other guest, that you do lose friends and and your relationships kind of change um, because of that. So you have to be more, look, as time goes on, and, and I know in my case as well, you have to be more, I suppose, um, respectful um, in the way that you present information. And that you drop a few seeds and you're not as direct or as blunt as you may have been. I may have been as when I started off 10 years ago, you know? Yeah, well, that, that's it. I mean, this is why myself and Steve, I don't know whether you've seen our video on the fluid belief system, but it's because of years mm. of myself and Steve doing the radio show and speaking to all the guests. And when you first wake up, you want to go and tell everybody and you wonder why. Why aren't you getting it? Why aren't right. you listening? And then yeah. you realize that kind of forcing your opinion on people is not going to work. So we kind of, kind of, we backed off and then we decided what we're going to do is ask questions. And then we decided, yeah. actually, we're going to ask questions about how they believe. So it's not what you believe, but how you believe. So we even forgot about the information and we just said, right, how do you believe not what you believe, but how do you believe? How does your mind work? And we went through yeah. the... Um, I've, we've talked about this, about the psychology of how the mind works and how the mind deals with information and the two ways that it deals with the information and what way people approach it and the weakness of not knowing something. So we've kind of gone down this road. and But over on YouTube, for people who are new to the show and who probably have not known about this fluid belief yeah. system... We suggest you go off to the OIM YouTube channel and look down our, um, our interviews and we have one there called the Fluid Belief System, which is myself and Steve talking about the psychology of how you think um, and what you believe and how to challenge your belief system. I mean, even Bruce Lee said it years ago about, you know, about martial arts and the glass of water. And if the glass of water is full up, you're not going to learn anymore. You have to chuck it out and, you know, start filling it up with new skills and everything else. And if people can't empty their glass of water, then, well, they're not going to get any more water. They're not going to learn anymore. So we have to be prepared to throw out the old and bring in the new. And unfortunately, yeah. people are stuck in a belief system, solid. Sometimes, part, sometimes the belief system, part of the belief system, they're fluid, which is great. And there's other parts that are staunch. That's what I believe in and I'm not going to move. And that's the part that they never 
educate themselves. They'll never grow in knowledge because they're too stuck in that old way. That's right. That's right. And you know what? Like you mentioned, the water meter protests, and I was involved in those myself. And you know, met some great people during those protests. And but I also met people, great people, but were awake to, to the political corruption and even the banking end of it. But when you mention something like, say, vaccines, you know, as you said, like you'd be labelled a conspiracy theorist. So the idea is, is with this conference, again, is to kind of look at the bigger picture and like to encourage people to, you know, question their belief systems as well. Because, OK, it's, it's a brave thing to do, but um, I think there's rewards at the end of it. Yeah. But, um, and and obviously, with your, you have two days of guests. Yeah. Do you want to give us a rough idea who your guests are? Do you want to mention yeah, a few names? Yeah. So we have two full days from 9.15 in the morning to 7.30 in the evening. Um, and not only do we have the 14 speakers, we have music, we have poetry, we have tribal, tribal drumming, shamanic drumming, and we have meditations as well. Um your listeners, I'm sure, will be familiar with a lot of the names. We have Ian R. Crane, who's going to be giving us a, a talk on about the death of democracy. Um, we got Ben Gilroy, so no better man to uh, tell us about the ins and outs of the political system that's broken and the courts, the corrupt courts as well. We have, let me see, going on, Terry Lawton. He's going to be talking about geoengineering and the climate change agenda. Um, Garota Coleman, who's very knowledgeable in about the wars in the Middle East, especially in Syria. As a lady, you might have heard of uh, Judith Farry Baker as well, who's coming over from the States, and she is, has a great story to tell. She was actually mistress of, believe it or not, Lee Harvey Oswald um, back in 1963. Um, so she has an amazing story to tell that sheds um, light on the the truth about the JFK assassination. We did get an email so, from that lady yeah. about doing a show, and we we emailed her back and yeah. said, "Yeah, we'd be delighted to have her on." Mm. And then we never heard from her since then. <laughs> so, right. So right. We, do, we don't know why that she decided not come on. Because I thought that would be interesting finding out about Lee Harvey Oswald and what really yeah. happened. Because I seen the documentary about it. But um, yeah, I yeah, mean, she, but she's amazing story to like She's she's probably busy because she had. Um, very busy time the last um, month or two. She organised a JFK conference um, in Dallas um, to mark the anniversary of his, of his assassination back in uh, late November there. So that was very well attended. So so she's great. Like she'd be on day two. So she's fantastic. As you you might have heard of uh, Tom Ryan. Yeah, Tom Ryan's a great guy. He's a hypnotist like myself. And he's going to be giving us a talk on personal sovereignty. You have uh, loads of different topics, like you have Mark Bajerski, lovely guy, really inspiring, uplifting man. Uh, he's going to talk about how you can rise above the manipulations of the whole system. Um, you have, let me see, going down through it, you have Gemma Hughes. She's, she's a great girl, local here in Waterford, um, talking about natural health and healing. So if you just go through those uh, speakers and topics, like there is a broad range of topics and subjects uh, being covered over the weekend. Mark Devlin should mention as well, another guy who is very interesting. He's actually been uh, talking at Open Minds conferences and across across Europe uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, he talks about the um, the control of the music industry by the powers of be the Illuminati or whatever you want to call them mm. and how many of the the popular singers that we're familiar with such as Bob Geldof are actually paid agents of the system yeah so you know and he goes into some of the very strange circumstances surrounding uh, the deaths of some pop singers such as Prince and so on mm. so that's a very interesting subject so He's coming over. Uh, you have Noel Brophy. He's the guy who's, who set up a group here in um, Waterford called Death Solutions. And he runs regular seminars in Carrick and down to Breary um, on how you can basically um, empower yourself 
against the powers that be in terms of representing yourself in court if you're a lay litigant and so on. Um, his talk is in, entitled uh, Your Rights and Common Law. So he's an expert in, in common and natural law. So going through those subjects, I mean, as you can see, Hilary Connor, I can't forget Hilary, she's, she's yet another hypnotist, a good friend of mine, and she's an aspiring lady, and she's given um, a wonderful uh, speech um, entitled The Powerful Truth of Who We Are. Um, so just go down through the speakers. I think I've mentioned more or less everyone. Um, we have also two um, slots called Inspirational Moments, and we have Sean, you might be familiar with Sean McGuire, um, out of the back radio show. So he's coming to give a few uh, poems. He's going to be doing some poetry at it. Um, and there's a lady here as well, uh, Jenny Ledwell, is going to be giving an inspirational speech. So altogether, we have 14 speakers over the two days. Very good. So it's, it's packed with speakers. It's packed with brilliant information, inspiring topics. And also, not only the speakers, as mentioned, that you have loads going on around that, like music. We have a musician there, Tom Milan, who is a fantastic guy, like who plays songs of freedom, you know, songs like um, Bob Marley Redemption song and so yeah. on, you know, so it's going to be really, like it's going to be a fantastic atmosphere and, and the whole vibration is going to be amazing for the weekend. So well, I can't wait good. myself. I'm looking forward to it myself, you know. Well, it sounds good. I'll be heading down on, as I say, on the Saturday. And um, it's, it's great when you have a, a room full of like-minded people or people, you know, we're all different levels, but open-minded to learning more about what's going on and the, the, the different areas. I'm just uh, just confirming with um, Steve. Steve, that's uh, Robert. You got his details there. So we'll send them over yeah. to Trevor. And Robert was in Ricklow tuning into the show. Well done, Robert. You got that right. Duty's Hotel is where it is. We'll be getting all the details at the end. Now, Trevor, you said you had woken yeah. up in over the 10 years. What yeah. have you seen around you with friends and family regarding the waking up process? Because, you know, we were now in, well, the start of 2017. And obviously 10 years ago was 2007. Have you seen any differences in your time with the people all around you? I have, but not as quickly as I would like, you know. Um, even when I woke up to this 10 years ago, like my wife wasn't aware of stuff that she's aware of now. And that did create conflict in, in our relationship. Um, but now she's, thankfully, she's on board regarding the vaccinations and, you know, the fluoride in the water and, and you know, looking at the, the labelling and the foods and so on and all that kind of stuff, which is fantastic, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she woke up at her own pace and her own speed. And as you said yourself, I mean, people have their own you know, pace to waking up. And some people, as you mentioned the first hour, might never wake up at all. And the more you force it, the further you're pushing them away. And so that's why, like, in terms of like the meetings here in Waterford, the Awaken Aware meetings, and I'm lucky that look, the group is there, that we have this outlet that we can just kind of relax and you know, and not watch your P's and Q's. We can just say what we want and talk about a range of subjects without having that fear of ridicule. Mm. Because you know yourself, like, I mean, on the checklist of what you can talk about with the normal friends and family, like, you know, outside of football and sometimes X Factor and, and so on, it's, it can be very frustrating. Because in one sense, you know, like you're keeping the peace, kind of saying nothing because you kind of know where that road goes through experience. But in the other sense, like it's hard to kind of repress your personality, you know, and kind of keep these thoughts to yourself and kind of talk about what most people want to talk about, you know. Exactly. It, was, it is very hard because you yeah. you, you get kind of um, a BS detector and uh, you develop yeah. an, an inbuilt BS detector. And watching stuff on the TV, you just think, I'm not even going to look at that. And I put it down to the certain, like if I'm flicking around, I kind of... I don't watch much TV, but when I do, I, tr I look mm. at things that are educational or I look at comedy because humor is very good. It's good energy. But there's mm. some programs that I see in the list and I just know from an energetic point of view, I'm not even going to entertain that program 
because yeah. it just the energy is just all wrong and I don't know whether that's down to years of being involved in this but you know just just some programs say I'm not even going to attempt to look at that program because the energy is just going to bring you down or it's going to affect you so I don't bother and it is very hard and sometimes it affects people socially because obviously if people want to go down the pub or something like that um, and you think I really don't want to go down the pub to start talking about the X Factor right. and the football and all that type of stuff and it does create a divide and it's great that you have a, a meeting where um, that you can get a group of people together do you have anything that you want to jump in and, and speak to Trevor about or comment on? <coughs> well all I can say is uh, something that Mick just put up on the chat room there and when we're talking about waking people up uh, Mick said and, and he's spot on and this is something that took me and probably you and probably Trevor and everyone else who's listening to this either either the live show or the podcast um, that you, we can't wake people up we cannot wake them up. All we can do is plant mm. seeds, give mm. them give them little pieces of information, and just hope that it, they 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 keep it in the back of the grey matter somewhere. And at some point in time, they may hear someone else saying something similar, and then they go, "Oh, I heard that before," and maybe it might inspire them to to do some research. But uh, as regards waking people up, yeah, I when I came I woke up first, um, Trevor. I was exactly the same. I, I ran to all my friends and all my family, and I just wanted to give them this information. It was like someone had shared a big... Si- it was like someone gave me the, the winning lotto numbers, and I wanted to share this <laughs> wealth. I wanted everybody to get rich and share, in the, you know, share, share the money. Um, but it was like as if you're trying to give them the money, and they're going, no, I don't want it. No, I don't take it. No, I don't want it. And they, they, and I, 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 I lost friends, and I lost family members. Yeah. Um, over this and like it, it was a case of you had to agree to disagree with a lot of family That's members right. but, 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 but you know the way there's, a, there's an old saying and I didn't even realise what this meant like until I woke up you know the old saying that I'm just not on the same wavelength as, as that yes. guy yeah. or that, yes. that lady and I didn't know what that meant until I woke up and when you wake up like you're literally vibrating at a different frequency than your old friends so if your yeah. old friends haven't moved and you're over here and they're still back there then, you know, it's difficult. But, like, yeah, change is, you know, a natural thing. You of know, like, change is, yeah. is a natural thing to change and evolve. And, you know, the first thing that was said to me by, I think, my mom, I remember saying, geez, Trevor, you've changed, you know, you've changed. I says, well, you know, everyone changes and everything changes and evolves. You know, no, nothing stays the same, yeah, you know. I, I think you, you, that, that's the magic word, uh, Trevor, evolves. I mean, we, yeah, we all change, but yeah. we evolve. I mean, I think if you picture a box, I know people always say, oh, think outside the box. But if you picture a box and in that box is a flower and the flower is growing inside the box, but it, it can never get outside the box and it's going to be it's going to be in there for the rest of its days. You know, and I think the mm. box that we're in is where we're evolving and we evolve outside the box. So therefore, we realize that the box is there to contain us and the box is not there for our well-being. It's just there to contain us and, and keep us trapped. And it's only when we start to evolve and we grow outside the box, we realise, hang on, what the hell? There's so much more out here that we, that we weren't aware of, you know. And then, obviously, when, when you become self-aware to everything else that the universe has to offer and you try to share that with someone who's still in a box, well, right. you're obviously, you're wasting your time. That's absolutely agree with that. But but sometimes like there are subjects like natural health and healing, which we're covering the conference that I think is a good point of entry for people. You know, because like, I mean, even with, with some friends and family that even though they might not uh, agree with some of the more conspiracy type stuff, I could often get asked the question about, you know, that uh, natural product, what was that natural product for such and such a condition that you were talking about a couple of weeks ago? You know, so the kind of like that way, they come to you rather than go to them because the more you chase them, the more they kind of run away, you know? Well, do you so know what? <laughs> Trevor, uh, Trevor, there was actually a product that uh, one of the lads we had on, I'm, I'm guessing you've heard, uh, Richard Cumbers of Pain Genie. Uh, yeah. Richard, Richard was on with us many times and he, he spoke of a product called Serapeptase and he told us all the benefits of Serapeptase. <laughs> And we spoke about it on the show, and I spoke about it again to it was one of my family members, and she was suffering with uh, like arthritis. Uh, no, sorry, it wasn't arthritis. It was carpal tunnel syndrome uh, in her hand. And mm. I suggest I just mentioned to her. I said maybe you should try this stuff. I said I heard about it from, from a guy who knows some stuff, uh, and 
you know, normally where some of my family members would have went, oh, yeah, uh, hocus pocus, you know, I'll, I'll leave that stuff alone. But uh, she actually went and she got some, some of the serapeptase and started taking it. And uh, she hasn't looked wow. back since. She's now on, I think, she, she, she now takes one every day and it keeps the carpal tunnel syndrome at bay. She actually d- uh, ran out of it uh, coming up to Christmas. And uh, yeah. the carpal tunnel syndrome came back. She was in a lot of pain, but as soon as she started back on the serapeptase, it was gone. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's absolutely great. fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, that's that's a fantastic thing, you know, to hear. And the, the other problem we're faced with as well is that there's an old saying that it's very hard to get someone to understand something when it's in their financial interest not to understand. Like, for example, I used to work with um, uh, a doctor um, as part of the, the DDI group. And awake to so most parts of the jigsaw, but when it came to the big pharma kind of conspiracy, you know, didn't want to know, you know, that's a conspiracy and that's nuts, you know. Yeah. Um, because obviously, you know, it's, it's very hard to, to break um, a lifetime of conditioning, you know. So that's kind of what one of the challenges there as well. And has your, obviously with your wife now open minded to what's going on regarding the poisons and all that stuff. Um, she's yeah. obviously teaching your your kids and stuff like that all about them, because we do yeah. that myself and That's Steve, right. with, with, with my son and Steve's kids, we try and educate them as much as much as we can. And we well, have probably, to. They're the future. Yeah, they exactly. And to be honest with you, our kids are probably more aware and open minded than a lot of adults that are out there. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that's I'm not very lucky that myself and my wife Andrea are on the same page regarding a lot of these things because I can imagine just the conflict if if we weren't because you know like we have two children, two beautiful children, Emma who's three and Owen who's one. Um, we for the first time we rented out an allotment there earlier on this year, and I literally had my daughter Emma who's only three up in the allotment basically you know every evening of the week, and I remember there's a guy come come in there. Um, a couple of weeks ago, it's a deliver from Tesco. And he couldn't believe that Emma knew every single fruit and veg that he was taking out. She was taking out from and naming the veg, from naming the fruit. So that's that's fantastic because, you know, as you know, like a lot of children are now they're so disconnected from nature, you know, through oh, yeah. the, you know, through the phones and, you know, the, the Xboxes and what have you. So it was great for us to be aware and, and, to, and to get a, to get Emma up there at the allotment and, you know, get her hands dirty and we get her own little plot that she could grow what she wanted. And we actually have a face and pay on Facebook, a private group, Emma's allotment. And we put up some information on there and some little videos as well. And it's really fun, you know, and she loves it. That's, know, so. And that's the way it should be, Trevor. I mean, you know, yeah. at least your, your children know exactly where the food on their plate comes from. I mean, most people, most children think it comes from the supermarket. You know, right. this magic shop. That's right. That's right. Imagine there was a, a a friend, a neighbour uh, called in there the other day, and we were having lunch, and we we're having the normal lunch basically, which was um, spinach, and you know, this is Emma who's three eating like raw spinach, and she was looking going mouth open, going, "She's how do you get her to eat that? You know, it's that's her favourite food." That's brilliant. We were a bit gobsmacked with that, you know, an avocado. And things like that, you know, so it, it's great. And like they haven't been, you know, they haven't been vaccinated as well. Um, and they haven't been sick once. You get an odd uh, running nose, but you know, we've been, we've been really lucky there. Like, and our whole, whole philosophy is to build up their immune systems and make them as strong. Cause, you know, that's where health comes from. Exactly. Well, Steve will tell you, uh, Steve's little girl, Holly. He, um, you haven't vac- vaccinated Holly. No, we, we made the, we made the same decision. We looked into it and made a very informed decision, probably the same as yourself, Trap. And, uh, yeah. uh yeah. like you say, yeah, she's never really sick. We all got a dose of the flu over Christmas. Um, she got a mm. runny nose. She had a sore throat for a day or two. And then she just bounces back and, and that's it. Uh, her own immune system is, it hasn't been compromised. So obviously it's doing what it's supposed to do. Absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing, you know, with children is that I've learned more from them than probably they've learned from me because, you know, when you kind of makes you kind of think about the bigger picture, because when you see the light in their eyes, you know, and they're so much full of life and then you look, you see the product that comes out at the end of the system and you, you kind of wonder like, what the hell is going on, you know? Yeah. So, um, 
if you know what I mean, in that sense. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, and as, the, as Steve said, the kids are our future. Now, the yeah. conference that you're doing, obviously, it's going mm. to be in February. We're going to get you to run through all the details before we let you go. Um, but do you have plans yeah. to do other conferences every year? I know you said you might, depending on how it goes this year. Um, but obviously, you have to, once it gets up off the ground and people know that it might be on and who's on, I reckon that could be you know, a good thing. Now is probably the time to start doing it because so many people now are beginning to be awake. Uh, so maybe yeah. now is the time to start doing it. Yeah, well, this conference is coming from the heart. You know, um, I can say that my hand on my heart that myself and the organisers are organising with for the right reasons. And, you know, I can't wait. We all can't wait um, for the conference and for the whole occasion. And it's not our conference, you know, it's your conference. It's up to people that, you know, that are waking up and to get on board and to support it. Because if it's a success, it it provides a platform for us to organise more conferences in the future, you know. And are you going to so, have it on DVD? Are you doing a DVD of it? Yeah, well, uh, we have plans to, to film it. I have a friend of mine here in Waterford that is going to film it. So um, we haven't kind of sorted out uh, what exactly we're going to do um, with that end of it, but it's going to be recorded, yeah. Because there might be people okay. like in Ireland who mm. can't get to it, or there yeah. could be international listeners who are listening to the show that might want to get a copy of it, who just can't physically yeah. get over to Ireland yeah. to see it. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, in, in some shape or form, like we will be making all of the conference available. We definitely will be. But I will say, though, I mean, even though, like, I mean, it only, it is, in our opinion, like, relatively cheap uh, for the whole weekend, um, but it is the experience as well. I mean, a lot of these speakers, like, people would have heard of already, and you, you'll find a talk of theirs on YouTube, but you can't be being there in the person, you know, and experiencing the whole, as I said, the vibration and of course, the yeah, whole atmosphere yeah. of the weekend, and, and that's what it's all about. I mean, even, no disrespect to the speakers, the speakers have been wonderful, and they're, each, each and every one of them have been wonderful to deal with. But um, the main reason for it is to bring people together and to, you know, the whole experience of the event as well. Yeah, no, totally, totally agree, Steve. Uh, mm. uh, the last time we were down there, Trevor, what we noticed as well, and which we thought was absolutely fantastic, is when someone is up on stage, or even before they go up on stage to give their speech or their presentation, they're mingling with the crowd. So, I mean, you know, they don't just come out of a, out of a room, uh, give a talk, and then go back into the room. They actually mingle, mix, and speak with, with the people as well. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, right. that's great. That's right. Well, well, and, uh, and as well as that, as you know, on, on, on Facebook sometimes as well, I mean, you can't be meeting someone in the flesh. And, like, Facebook can be kind of not the greatest communication tool in the world in terms of cross wires. But when you're there with someone, like, in, in front of them eye to eye, and, you know, you can't have any better than that, you know. Well, I was going to say, Trevor, what, something, I don't know whether you're, you're planning to do this, but what PIR mm. did on the conference that we, 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 went, uh, we were on is at the end of the... Um, the last speaker they had a round table where they got all the speakers who were on at the top of the stage and the audience could actually ask the question and then anybody of you know of the speakers any one of the speakers could pass the mic around to answer it which we thought was a good idea that's right yeah we have um an opportunity for people to ask questions at the end of every talk so on average, each speaker has one hour, and then there's 15 minutes Q and A at the end of of each speech. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able. We decided because with time limits to to get people together, and like as well as that, the way we were looking at it, a lot of the speakers were leaving. Some of them were only staying for the Saturday and so on. So it was hard to get everyone together at the end as well. So. We decided to, like, with time constraints and all we had to squeeze in because it is a packed weekend yep. that, you know, for um, an open forum kind of round table. Um, maybe maybe next time, you know? Yeah, okay, no problem. Well, listen, we let you go, but before we let you go, we're going to get all your details to let people know about the conference, where it is, where it's at, time, date, prices, and all that kind of stuff. So um, thanks for coming on, Steve. Over to you, and if you want to go through that. Thanks very Trevor. much, Alan. No Appreciate problem, it. Trevor. Yeah, Trevor, it's been it's been good having you on. We'll have to do it again sometime. Um, Thanks, and hopefully we might even hook up with you down there. Uh, but well, you're more than welcome. 
Oh yeah, we we yeah. we 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 seen your picture on YouTube. We'll we'll hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, come here, uh, Trevor. What, just before we finish, just uh, throw out all the information there, will you? Uh, as Alan said, when and uh, how much, and uh, any any other information that you, that you feel is necessary. Okay, I suppose starting with the tickets, uh, you the tickets are available at https. Um, Sorry, is this the is this the the event yeah. bright? Is this the the event bright? The event bright, yeah. So I actually I have that up on 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 oh, the, have on that the already. we so have that up on the chat room. Right, yeah. That's yeah. Right. So we have a website as well. So the website is openmindsconference.com. So openmindsconference.com. So that's the website, and tickets are still available. You can still get the the early bird. The early bird is forty nine euro for the whole weekend. So that early bird initially went up to the 31st of December, but we decided to extend that to the 15th of January, so which is up until next Sunday night, I think. So we want to make it affordable for people, and, and you know, 49 euro is reasonable considering the, you know, it's a two-day event and all the information, the speakers, and so on, everything that's happening. So. That's the you have that Eventbrite link, so that's OMIC um, dot Eventbrite dot IE. That's where you get the tickets. Um, it's happening 25th and 26th of February. That's a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, at Dooley's Hotel, which is on the quay in Waterford City. So it's a lovely hotel there in Waterford City. It's literally right beside the train station, right beside the bus station, and it's right beside all the amenities, pubs, bars, restaurants. So. As well as like Dooley's Hotel, if you are interested in going, Dooley's Hotel have done have given us a rate as well uh, on rooms for the weekend. So if you just mention that you're with the the Open Minds Conference, they'll do you a deal as well. Brilliant, brilliant. And of course we have um, Robert. We're going to send you over Robert's details, Trevor, and um, so you can send Robert the tickets or organise the tickets for Robert for winning the actual mm-hmm. quiz earlier on. Um, Trevor, thanks a lot for coming on. Much appreciated. We'll see you down in Waterford. Um, I'm planning to head down. Steve's uh, busy, I think, at the time, but we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, either way, we'll see you down there. We'll give you a show. And um, thanks very much, guys. And listen, I really appreciate you inviting us on, on your program. I really love your program, it's a brilliant show. Keep up the good work, no problem. Thanks a lot, Trevor. Just stay with us there. And we're just going to a musical break. We'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com, and People's Internet Radio.com. Yes. Open your mind, your mind. 